we're going to go ahead and take a look at um, implicit differentiation. So, um, you know, before implicit differentiation, we dealt with stuff that was always defined explicitly, which means something set up, you know, y equals something in terms of x. When something is defined implicitly, um, it's not that way. You know, the x's and y's can be on the same side and so forth. Okay, there's still a relationship between x and y, but they're just defined implicitly, meaning, again, this is not solved for y in terms of x. Now, this one I guess we could solve, but many of them you cannot. Okay, so there's a little different approach you, you have when you have something like this, when you have a function that's defined implicitly. Okay, I'm going to take you through this process. So, um, in order to take the derivative, and so we're, right now we're trying to find the derivative of this function. Okay, we're trying to find dy over dx. You just start out and you take the derivative for the most part in the normal way. When you're dealing with anything with an x, you just take the derivative like normal. So the derivative of 3x squared is going to be 6x. Okay, nothing changes there. When I move on to my y terms, I initially take the derivative like normal. So the derivative of y squared is going to be 2y. But then, whenever I take the derivative of y, I'm going to multiply by dy over dx. The reason why I'm doing that is because of the chain rule. We're considering y its own function of x, and therefore, you know, dy over dx is basically kind of like the derivative of the inner function. You know, y is the inner function, and so the derivative of y is dy over dx. All right, it's kind of strange, but again, just remember, whenever you take the derivative of y, multiply by the dy over dx. The derivative of 7 is just 0, okay? So this is the initial step right here, the initial implicit differentiation step, very important, okay? Now our goal here is to find dy over dx. So this one's a fairly simple one, so there's only one dy over dx here, but um, you know, basically uh, at this point you're going to want to gather your dy over dx terms on one side and everything without a dy over dx term on the other side. doesn't matter which side you choose, I'll just keep this dy over dx term here and move my 6x term over by subtracting it, so I'll get 2y times dy over dx is equal to negative 6x. And at this point, I want to try and get dy over dx by itself. So I'll go ahead and divide both sides by 2y. So I'll get dy over dx is equal to negative 6x over 2y. Okay, And I could simplify that if I wanted to. 6 and 2 divide to be negative 3x over y. Okay. So, what I have found now, I have found my derivative. My derivative is three, or negative 3x three over y. And, you know, it's, it looks a little different because there's a y in there. Usually our derivatives don't, okay? But still it works out the same. So if, you know, you had a point that you had on this graph that you wanted to find the slope at that point, you would just plug it into the derivative and that would tell you the slope. So it still works the same. It's still the uh, general rule for the slope of the function. And, uh, yeah. There we go.